So in the previous section, we introduced the idea of using parametric equations to represent a curve. Um, we looked at a few examples. Um, we didn't do a lot of plotting because um, so far the only real technique we have for drawing a parametrically defined curve is to, you know, basically take us some sample of the t values in the domain, plot a bunch of points, you know, we're back at like 10th grade graphing methods, right? Table of values. Put the t values, get the x values, get the y values, plot all the points. Um, and you probably want to be able to move beyond that. Um, draw curves the way we, we draw curves when we're in, say, you know, chapter 3, doing curve sketching, right? We want to look for, for critical points. We want to, you know, look for extreme values. Although for parametric curves, um, mentioned a bit, we want to look for both, you know, extreme y values and x values because we can have things like vertical tangents, we can have curves that come back around on themselves, things like that. Um, but you know, we want, we want to be able to use calculus techniques to tell us what these curves should look like. Um, we don't want to have to always rely on computer-generated plots when we're dealing with parametric curves. Um, so basically what we want to do now is we want to go back and repeat a lot of what we did in Calc 1 uh, in the parametric setting. And so of course the two primary questions you're interested in when you're dealing with curves are tangents to curves and area, right? We'll start with tangents. So if you've got some curve, right? So maybe you've got, I don't know, like you've got some curve, right? So you've got x is some function of t, let's say, right? y is some other function of t, and you know t belongs to some interval i, and so you plot f of t, g of t for all points in the interval, and, and you get some kind of curve, right? Maybe you get one of these, these cool spirals, or you know, there's all those interesting curves that you've probably seen as you were looking through. So maybe you get some kind of curve like this, and you'll know, see so you're at some point on the curve, right? And here's a point, right, with coordinates f of t, g of t, and we want to know what the tangent line looks like at that point, right? So there's, there's a tangent, right? Okay, well, we want to know the slope. What is the slope of that tangent line? Well, the slope is still given by dy dx, right? Um, one of the, we can kind of use one of the basic premises that we already relied on when we were talking about um, curves that were defined implicitly, right? Which is that Globally, we clearly cannot represent a curve like this um, as a graph, right? We can't write y as a function of x and, and recover the entire curve. But maybe small pieces of the curve, right? You can cut out pieces of the curve that do pass the vertical line test, and you can say, okay, so y is a function of x. And so we still have that relationship between y and x, and so it should still be the case that the slope is given by, well, dy dx, right? So we come up here and we say, all right, well, you know, how does that work? Why? So let's, let's suppose that we actually are in a situation where, let's see, I need a new, uh, let's say, let's just use big F. So let's say that y is equal to f of x, right? Well, then it follows that y of t, right, would be f of x of t, right? And take derivatives. So y prime of t will be f prime of x of t times x prime of t, right? But really what we're interested in here is we, we want f prime of x. So forget about the dependence on t for a minute and notice that, okay, well, what this is telling me is telling me that f prime of x is y prime of t divided by x prime of t, right? Or, or if you like in, in, in Leibniz notation, dy dx is equal to dy dt divided by dx dt, right? And some people like thinking about it this way because, again, I mean, although we shouldn't really think of these as fractions, if you do, you can think of the dt's as cancelling out and giving you the equality. And Okay, the point is, 
we have a way of computing dy dx, right? dy dt divided by dx dt. And this actually also gives us a little bit of insight into something that we talked about when we talked about um, curves that were defined implicitly. Um, you know, we said, well, you know, when, when can you actually compute dy dx, right? Well, we can compute dy dx, um, you know, as long as you can plug in your values for x and y and you don't get zero, right? Um, and we said, well, the, the, pl the places where dy dx kind of blows up because you have a zero in the denominator, those are more or less your, your vertical tangents, right? And that sort of makes sense. Uh, if we have a vertical tangent, like here, for example, right? Well, we can't choose some range of t values that includes that point, right? I can't choose an open interval including that particular t value um, and say that that piece of the curve gives me y as a function of x because any, any piece of the curve that's centered on that vertical tangent is going to fail the vertical line test, right? Okay. But what are the points with the vertical tangents? Well, again, vertical tangents happen where the denominator is zero, right? They happen when x prime is zero, right? The, and this makes sense. The vertical tangents happen when x is stationary, just as horizontal tangents happen when y is stationary, right? We kind of already understand that from Calc 1. Um, and so now, you know, this is all starts fitting together a little bit better, right? If y prime is zero, that should be a horizontal tangent. If x prime is zero, that should be a vertical tangent, right? You can start getting actually a little bit better understanding of how curves work. Um, once you get into parametric calculus. Um, so this is the starting point, the basic idea we know now, right? Uh, as long as we stay away from the vertical tangents, then we can assume that y can be written as a function of x. Chain rule tells us that dy dx is given by y prime of t divided by x prime of t. So now we know how to compute slope for a parametric curve, slope of the tangent line, which means we can find tangent lines to parametric curves. Uh, we'll explore that uh, in a few examples coming right up.